what is up guys i hope you guys are doing fine i hope you guys are doing well so as you all know the m1 imac has finally launched everyone is doing their reviews now if you guys are in this channel for some time now then you guys must have seen that i had purchased the m1 macbook pro back when it was released and now this is the six month review of it and what i think about it what i feel about it should i upgrade was this a good decision or not let's find out with that being said if you guys are interested on tips and tricks on video editing on final cut pro premiere pro and all those stuff then do make sure to subscribe to this channel because we have to play with that youtube algorithm and get this to reach more unknown people with that being said let's get started and so as you all know m1 macbook pro it has been a sensation it has been something which was revolutionary and for me to this day as per my experience it has not let me down there are some hiccups of it there are some disadvantages of its design there are some disadvantages to its ports but so far performance wise it is still i feel one of the best macs apple has ever created i have the imac i have the imac 5k which was the older version the 2019 one but so far this one is doing much much better in almost every task out there so let me just go on step by step of what i think about this laptop after six months of using it so just in a short nutshell yes it has degraded in quality just a little bit especially in performance especially in the thermals of it because previously when i purchased it it was super cool super silent but now it does get a little bit hot and in some cases the fans start running a little bit louder than usual so which cases are those we're going to find in this video First of all, the display, extremely good display, extremely good 4K display, extremely good color accuracy. I love the display. Only thing, it is 13 inch, it is small. Yes, it is a little bit of disadvantage. Maybe the 16 inch one will be much better for some people, but still it is a good trade off for the good picture quality, which I get. Second of all, the ports, two ports are not enough. And on one side, it is just not sufficient. I like not using the dongles because I don't like things hanging around around my laptop. I use a SSD which always sits behind my laptop, but I do not do not like using the dongle because it is just an extra addition which is added to the laptop. I just don't like it for some reason. When I have to use a HDMI port, something like that, at those points, I have to use the dongle, but otherwise I don't really use it much. And for mouse, I use a Bluetooth mouse or I use the touchpad, which by the way, it's amazing. The touchpad has always been one of my favorite things about the laptops because of which I also brought the magic trackpad for the iMac too. So that is one of the good things about Apple laptops. The trackpad is amazing. So the third and most important part in my opinion, the performance, how you guys think of this laptop as a performance beast, what it performs, how it is, was this a good decision? So in simple words, yes, it was a good decision for day-to-day -day tasks such as Notion, Gmail, website designing and all those stuff. It's just flawless. It's so far so snappy. Mac OS always is one of the best OS out there. It is extremely good, extremely reliable, extremely secure. So most of the things are extremely fast. When it comes to content creation, where you guys must be wondering what it actually feels like. So for Final Cut Pro X users, it is blazingly fast. 4K videos, even 5K videos, 6K videos editing, very fast. It just color grades, stabilizes, added effects. All those things are done really, really smoothly. And most of the time, the rendering is super smooth. Of course, I will recommend you to turn off the automatic background render because it does slow down your computer a little bit. But so far, in my case, it has been really a good experience. However, when it comes to plugins, all plugins are still not yet compatible, such as Pixel Film Studios are still working on it. Motion VFX, for now, most of the plugins are compatible except some. My plugins are always compatible, so rest assured for that part. So with that being said, if you guys are planning on purchasing any plugin from any website, make sure to check whether it is compatible with M1 or not. Premiere Pro. Premiere Pro, I have mixed feelings. I will say that it is still not optimized. It is still not a good option. Computer does get a little bit hot while using it. The fans do get turned on while using it. So don't use Premiere Pro. If you are using the M1 MacBook Pro, then do make sure to use Final Cut because that is going to be the most bang for the buck as well as the most efficient software out there. 
for editing in this laptop and Lightroom Lightroom the Lightroom classic is still not optimized so it is still a little bit slow but the main Lightroom the Lightroom which I personally don't like is very fast it is blazingly fast because it is optimized for the m1 chip but the classic one is still not yet optimized it is still running on rosetta however if you guys are okay with the normal lightroom the uh, main one which i don't like just don't like if you are an og user you guys must not like the new lightroom as well you guys must be liking the classic always it's classic for a reason that's why we all like it right so yeah that is how the performance is so far it is good in simple languages but there are some points there are some specific uses where the laptop just sounds like an airplane taking off for example GPU intensive tasks tasks such as stabilizing footages you know adding some glitch effects other sorts of transitions those are all fine but say for example if you're using or putting seven or eight different kinds of glitch effects then the computer does get hot and the fans start running but in most cases i'm sure you guys will not require that kind of usage other than those the most typical scenario where i saw that the m1 macbook pro is lacking is video encoding say for example i'm converting a h.265 video to h.264 or say for example i'm converting a mov to mp4 or a 4k to 1080p something with a software such as wondershare video converter or something like handbrake which is free of cost in those cases it is extremely gpu intensive and those are the scenarios where your laptop will just sound crazy it is just going to be sounding like a plane taking off it is just so so you know i will say that it turns extremely hot the fans are extremely loud okay so i'm just converting a small mov file to mp4 format file using the wondershare video converter i don't know whether you guys can hear it or not but the fan noise is insane coming out of this laptop let me just you know bring the phone closer to the laptop so those are the scenarios which i think you guys should be worried about but I don't think it is uh, something that typical which you do on a daily basis. But if you do, then do make sure to get the Intel ones because graphics are much better on those or maybe Windows are a better option, of course, for always in those cases. Uh, I will say that's it. Um, overall, it's an extremely good laptop. It is definitely bang for the buck. If you are even not eligible for the student discount, just ask any of your friends child or someone who is in college someone known to get an educational discount for you because that is going to itself give a massive discount to the pricing and of course with several different kinds of bank credit cards they also give much more discounts so check them out of course this is one of the good purchases i have personally made should you buy it now if you are in dire need of a laptop then yes this is the way to go however not all softwares are compatible like i already mentioned not all softwares are yet optimized so make sure to check them out such as autocad is still not yet optimized i'm an architecture student but i do use a windows laptop to use those softwares because this is still not yet optimized photoshop i think it is optimized but i still don't use it much on this laptop i use affinity photo i use lightroom i use final cut pro i don't use premiere pro on this laptop i use it on my windows laptop so those are the use case scenarios which i use other than those daily tasks like you already mentioned it is always blazingly fast on any apple laptops out there so rest assured you guys are covered for all cases i told you all the disadvantages of it ports are a situation which i think most of you guys will have so if you guys have some time if you guys want to wait for the next one then do wait because the next one will be much faster and all the hiccups with this particular processor they are going to improve it in the next one so stay tuned for that too so with that being said that is enough for this video guys hope you guys like this video if you guys like this video drop a like comment down below and i'll see you guys in the next one peace